Okay. I can't see if people are ready in the back there. Are you, raise your hand. Good. Okay, we're ready to resume. So we have established the least upper bound property for the real numbers as a very important property. And I want to talk about some consequences of the least upper bound property. And then I want to talk about some properties of the least upper bound, since we're going to be using them quite a bit. Okay, so that's the plan for the second half of this lecture. So uh, let's discuss some consequences of the least upper bound property. So one of the, the, the consequences is something that uh, may be self-evident, but it's important to see how it follows from this least upper bound property. And that is uh, something we'll call the Archimedean property. Archimedean. It's hard to spell, and probably that vowel there is the most troublesome. Archimedean property of the real numbers. And what it says is the following. If you give me two numbers in that are real, and let's demand that one of them, x, be bigger than 0, then I claim the following is true, that there is a positive integer, little n, such that you can multiply n times x, and it'll, eventually one of those multiples will be bigger than y. OK? That seemed pretty self-evident. Um, Katie, question? Question? Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, if y is negative, n, n equals 1 will suffice. OK? OK, so this seems like a very innocent property, um, but it's, it's a consequence of the least upper bound property. So let's, let's prove this property. Um, actually, uh, maybe I, I might even just point out some other things before I prove this property. So uh, it's equivalent to thinking about the following uh, statement. I claim, um, if you like, if I just let y be 1, then really what this is saying is if uh, uh, x is bigger than 0, then there exists uh, a natural number such that 1 over n is less than x. OK, so some reciprocal of a positive number is going to be eventually smaller than x. Yes, Anil? Uh, do, do the rationals have the Archimedean property? Uh, let's see. So it's, um, yeah, so let's see. So let's just check. If you have two rationals, one of them is bigger than 0, then there is a positive integer that makes uh, that whose multiple is eventually bigger than that other positive integer. Um, yeah. Yeah, it does have it does have the Archimedean property. Um, now it's yeah. Okay. So let me let me um, let me come back to this. Okay. Because I, I yeah. So there are some distinctions to be made. But let me come back once we once we have uh, the argument. So how would I prove a statement like this? So if I want to to uh, to think about this. Um, one way to think about it is the following. Let's suppose I have a, a number line here. So here's the proof. Let's look at this, the collection of all multiples of x. 
okay, for n in the natural numbers. Claim is that this is eventually bigger than y. Now, if it's not true, we'll hope to get a contradiction. That's the, that's the, 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 the claim. So this is a proof by contradiction. A, let's consider, so I'll make this a statement by saying consider A. So if uh, A is bounded, if A were um, uh, bounded by Y, that's what it would mean for the statement to not be true, is that Y is bigger than everything. So in other words, NX is less than Y for all N. That's the, that's the contradiction we're beginning with. Then what would that mean? Well, then y is an upper bound for a. But a is a collection of numbers, right? So and it's bounded above. Therefore, it has a what? A least upper bound. So a has a least upper bound. by the least upper bound property. Let's call it alpha. So the picture that I'm going to have here is I have a bunch of multiples of, of uh, x. okay, And if for some reason these never, ever exceed some number y, then this collection of dots has a least upper bound, which I will call uh, alpha. Let's say, um, let's say alpha is right here. Okay. All right. Good. So, how is this going to help us get a contradiction? Well, if this is a least upper bound. What has to be true about the least upper bound? Uh, uh, what has to be true about anything smaller than alpha? Not an upper bound. Good. So then alpha minus, oh, let's subtract something convenient. How about subtracting x? Since x is positive, this is smaller. Alpha minus x is not an upper bound for a. Okay, but if it's not an upper bound, that means what? Hence, alpha minus x is less than some multiple. Let's give that multiple a name. What would you like to call it? How about something specific instead of n, little n? Let's how about little m x, and we'll tell the reader for some m in the natural numbers. Okay, so now I've just subtracted alpha uh, minus x, and I get a position over here, perhaps. Let me use a different color. Maybe this is alpha minus x. Okay, help. Oh. Okay, then what? So alpha is less than mx plus x, otherwise known as, let this one, m plus 1 times x. Okay, good. Uh, so, so there's, there's, all of you are trying to get to a contradiction. What is a contradiction? If alpha is less than m plus 1 times x, 